So this video has been requested quite a bit so it's about time we knock it out but before we get there I want to make sure you guys understand the techniques I'm showing you in this video is what I'm doing that works for me and it's not necessarily going to be safe in your rifle so whatever you do work up in your loads when you're doing load development or loading for your rifle what I'm showing you today is techniques that I use I by no means think that they're perfect and they can absolutely be improved upon and I do change them up quite a bit so without further ado Let's have a look at what we used um, to do the load development uh, or loading for this video. So first of all, I'm starting with brand new small rifle primer alpha munitions brass. So I really like the fact that the alpha brass comes individually packaged. Each section of brass is in its own little compartment. It's got a piece of foam over the top. It's not vibrating. It's not shaking during transport and stuff like that. And that's a really nice little touch. So well done on that alpha. For the guys in South Africa, alpha brass is not available here yet. I got a sample package and was really lucky uh, to be able to sample this. We are working on getting that to you here. It's really exciting. They've got some great little um, calibers that they're producing high quality brass for. So I'm super excited about that. Now, my process for loading once fired brass or how many ever times fired brass is relatively simple. There is, we are just not going to resize um, during this process. So first of all, I'm going to start with the new brasses. I'm going to take it over to my RCBS case prep station. And basically what I'm going to do is do a light chamfer and deburr on the inside and the outside of the neck of each section of brass just to take care of any, any any little imperfections that we may have on that. What I would also do here usually with already fired brass is by the time I've cleaned my brass either wet tumbling or tumbling with the corn cob media what I would also do is run an already fired case that's been deep primed after it's been cleaned. I usually deep prime after I um, corn cob tumble. Uh, if I'm going to stay in a steel tumble I'll deep prime before the time and that flash hole should be pretty clean. But if I've used the corn meter to tumble, I would just deep prime using a universal deep priming tool, at which point I would run it through the little case prep station, just quickly take care of any debris or something in that flash hole and that primer pocket. And then I would also run it, I would add a brush on one of the stations and I'd run the brush through the neck and inside the case just to grab any bits of corn cob that's already stuck in that case. Because if you have extra corn cob in there, you might have an um, explosive situation on your hands. So be wary of that if you are using corn cob. Make sure all those cases are clean. I've actually had a close encounter with a very hot load because I'm very meticulous when I do the powder that I can't get a double charge. So I think I missed corn cob in one case um, and I had massive pressures dealing with that um, round when it went off. And uh, yeah, it was a scary moment. It was the first scary moment I've ever had uh, reloading. And it was a sober reminder that what we're doing here is not, we're not playing. We're, we're building bombs and we're putting our faces next to them if we're not taking care of what we're doing. So just a tip from my side, cell phone away, don't take any calls or get distracted um, when you are reloading, especially when it comes to charging with the powder and the stuff. But be meticulous when you're doing this. Yeah, I've, I've seen way too many reloading accidents on, on the internet and, and none of them are ever good. So keep that in mind. Okay, so after we're done with the case prep station, we're going to come over to our other table. And uh, what you'll notice also on the alpha cases, I saw a guy asking about this on the internet recently, is he mentioned that his brass is stained because it had like a discoloring on the necks. And uh, that's basically just annealing coming from the factory and that's making that neck tension more consistent by doing that. And excuse me, there's nothing wrong with your cases as a result of that. So then what I, we're going to do now next is I run a K&M expander mandrel through all my necks when I do new brass and actually when I do once fired brass. That's sort of something I always do because I want the ID to be the same on every single neck. ID is inside diameter of the, of the neck on the case um, and I achieve that by running the expander mandrel through because I'm pushing all those imperfections out to the outside and I'm because I want consistent neck tension. Okay, but before I do that I use some graphite dry loop and I literally just push every single little neck in there and I do that simultaneously as I'm because you have to set up your press folders it's just another die that you put in so I pop in a primer and then I just run that die down to the bottom or the handle down to the bottom uh, case goes up the top into the expander mandrel and I sort of do two birds with one stone and then uh, once I've got all those taken care of my cases are all primed and the necks have been done I will then put them in my reloading train now when it comes to charging cases I quite like the area 419 funnel kit now this is a super cool funnel kit because 
it's basically giving you, I think we have six um, different little collets that are specific to calibers. Okay, so if I want to load 224, I just put on, uh, I think it's the red one. If I want to load 65, it's the green one and so on. And then you can't really have any spillage if, with, as a result of the sort of universal funnel. I've got one of those, that little green one down there. It's not great. So um, yeah, that funnel kit is really cool. And the other cool thing about it is you don't have any kernels of powder getting stuck on the funnel kit. Everything just falls like straight into the case, which is awesome. Now, scale-wise, I use an AND FX120i scale with an auto trickler setup. Now, this is a really, really nice scale. It's also really, really expensive. Now, people, when they find out what this setup costs, they're like, wow, Pete, that's, uh, that's a little crazy. And yeah, it is crazy if you think about it, just in terms of the monetary side of things. But when I made this investment into my reloading, I mean, the, the RCBS charge masters and those things are quick and at the top there you'll see the Lee, Lee Auto Dispenser thingy or whatever the case. I think it's a horny one. Anyway, they're good, but they're slow. And when I started running the numbers and seeing this is how long it takes me to load for a two-day match loading 230 rounds, I thought like if I can get something that's quicker with the same amount of accuracy or better accuracy that that might be a great investment. And for myself, it absolutely has been one of the best things I've bought for reloading. It's almost instantaneous in how quickly it dispenses the powder and it's super accurate. There's no under or overloads or, I mean, I've probably loaded a couple of thousands of rounds and maybe had one or two that were under and that was as a result of me just bumping the table at like the super last minute. The scale is so sensitive. If you literally, you can stand like five meters away and go, and the numbers will like run on the scale. It's super cool. So basically how it works is it dumps your initial charge up um, to like two grains under where you wanna be and then the auto trigger just runs up the, the last little bit. It's super efficient. I basically then charge all my cases. So then we're gonna get ready to seat some bullets after we've charged all our cases. Now before you seat any bullets, I usually put a big worker's LED light at the top of my loading bench, like an additional light. So I can see very clearly into each and every case that I can see there's powder. I also check that the powder levels are the same through all the cases, that one's not slightly higher than another one for whatever reason that may be. And I try and catch little inconsistencies like that. If you want to be very safe, you could actually take all your complete loaded rounds and weigh them all individually. And if you have any outliers by like three or four grains, you might wanna put that one one side and double check what's gone wrong in that specific one because you shouldn't have massive variables like that. That's just a little extra safety step if you wanna do that. Could be a good, good idea. Um, anyway, so I coat all my bullets. Now I coat my bullets with something called HBN, which is hexon boron nitride. I'll put the name here somewhere, it's difficult to say. So there's a couple of advantages of doing that. First of all, it makes cleaning my rifle a lot easier. I don't experience a cold bore shot like many people do. My cold bore shot is where the last shot was after I cleaned my rifle. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can read about more about HBN coatings online. Um, just Google it. You'll find a lot of information. Often people ask me in the comment section, but unfortunately I can't get to all of those. So just, just Google it. You'll find quite a few interesting things. It is for sale in South Africa. You kind of have to dig a little bit for it. But uh, yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. So basically how I do that is I start off with washing all my bullets because they might have a little bit of oil on them and that's something you want to avoid. Now if you pay close enough attention here, you'll notice that I'm washing burger hybrids. So I've actually been gathering footage for this video for quite some time because I'm filming different parts of um, the operation as I'm doing them. And since then I've actually switched to the 140 grain ELDMs. So I wash my bullets with warm water and some dish soap just to clean any impurities off there, any oils. Then I put them in the oven, okay? at a very low temperature and I stir them regularly just to evenly distribute the heat. I kind of do the oven at like 40 degrees. So nothing near hot enough to melt any of the ballistic tips or deform any bullets. I just want to get rid of the moisture. Sometimes when I dump it out before it goes in the oven, I rub it off with some kitchen towels. And at this point, I'm usually also wearing rubber gloves and trying not to touch anything with my hands again. Then while those bullets are hot and completely dry. Make sure there's no little bits of water in the tips, some of the bullets that have the sort of uh, open tips. So then what I do is I take the dry bullets, 
I add them to two little buckets filled with stainless steel BBs. You take a tiny bit of the suspiciously looking white HBN powder um, and you add it to this mixture. I kind of try to do like 50 bullets in each little container. Depends how big your container is and it depends how many stainless steel BBs you are you have in there. I have found that 50 kind of each works for me. I've then made a little custom wood block that I put these containers into and I put them in my rotary tumbler and I probably run them for like an hour or so. Uh, then when I take them out, I've got a little nifty way of getting the stainless steel BBs out. I just take a strong magnet and I lift all of those out and I separate the two. Now you'll see the bullets have these little white coatings on them. And sometimes I'll even take a little microfiber cloth and I'll polish off the excess of that, not to get any sort of clumps or anything like that um, on the tips, okay? Then when it comes to seeding bullets, first of all, when I measure my overall, or when I measure how long my cartridge should be from the lands, I do not measure from the tip to the bottom of the bullets. I don't do the TPL thing, uh, or that's what we call it in South Africa. I measure from the ogive, okay, to the bottom of the case. Now, the reason I do that, that's a consistent measurement. But when you're measuring from the tips, especially you have the open tips or the ballistic tips, some of them are slightly deformed and you'll get different measurements, which with my OCD drove me absolutely insane. So I started measuring from the ogive because uh, that's kind of the important measurement you need anyway if you're determining jump and stuff like that to your lands. For myself, I load to maximum magazine length, which on my 6.5 Creed is about 2 inches and yeah, 2.22 inches or something like that. Now I've got two presses. I've got the K&M Arbor Press with the little dial that you can see how much seating pressure you needed to seat every bullet. Uh, I use the Wilson die with the VLD seating stem for that and that works great, but for myself it is a little bit slow when I am loading in bigger volumes. So I also have the Big Boss 2 press, which I have a lot of good luck with and I'm using Reading dies at the moment. So after I've basically loaded up all my ammunition, if I'm gonna go out to a match, I take a Sharpie or two, and I do a little marking on each case, which you can see here, and I would pop them straight into my Wells Custom Defense uh, little ammo pouch. If I'm just going out to the range, they go right back into the alpha box, which is cool because it also, it's big enough that it can take the loaded ammunition uh, with the little foam piece on top and they're not jiggling and shaking about while you're transporting them, which is really cool. Now let me show you guys the result of this actual loading session, which I filmed here for you. Um, so I shot this on the 15th of March. So this is what we're working with. I hope that camera is focusing on that because I can't see the camera screen with the way we've set up the lighting here today. But there was a .17 MOA group at 100 yards, uh, which is pretty great for new brass. It hasn't been fire formed in your actual chamber. So I'm super stoked with that. Unfortunately, that match I shot, I came second because I had a few bubbles on the first two stages. But pretty impressive result with the Alpha. Um, I haven't actually gone to doing a new load with the brass as it is now because I've recently changed barrels. But I did test the same load with some other loaded ammunition I have. And it does like it. Um, we did the barrel breaking yesterday and I'm gonna do a separate video on that. But yeah, that's kind of it for my reloading guide. Um, that's what I do. I hope I didn't miss anything. Let me check my little list here quickly. Mm, got it, got it, got it, got it. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, kind of covered everything. And then guys, I really wanna ask you if the videos are beneficial to you, please take some time to share these with your buddies. I need this YouTube channel to grow. It's growing nicely, but we can always do better. I wanna do this full time at some point. The quicker we can grow the channel, the quicker we can get there and the better quality content I can put out for you guys and then I can put out more content if I'm doing this full time. So that's kind of the goal where we are. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun putting this video together. I really enjoyed this project. Um, yeah, I've learned a ton about reloading. I'm pretty sure I can learn a hell of a lot more about reloading. But that's the beautiful thing about the sport and that's why it intrigues me because you can kind of never perfect it, which is super cool and that's what keeps people coming back. And uh, that's just on the reloading side. Then you still gotta get the shooting skills and all those things, the wind reading, there's so many variables here. It's, it's really like the deepest rabbit hole I've ever gone into. And um, yeah, I'm having a ton of fun on this journey and it's been super cool to share it with you guys. Anyway, without further ado, thank you so much for watching once again, I hope this video was worth the wait. Um, yeah, see ya, bye.